So recently I picked myself up a Nintendo 64. Mainly because of all these videos I've been doing on Battle of the Ports that have N64 games and I always have to resort to emulation. So it's about time I got some real hardware. Thing is, the N64 is only a composite out or S video. I don't like either, so I got myself this. This is an RGB kit. Inside the little box we have the RGB converter board and three wires. And this is a super simple mod that even the most simplest of skilled persons can do, including myself. As you can see the board has nothing on the bottom. And what we do is basically we solder it into place where the video output is. Basically you just uh, layer over these pins here and that's it. Very, very simple. But first we've got to get this shielding off. So let's turn over and get this heatsink off first, which is fastened to the main motherboard by a load of screws. Okay, now the first thing you want to do is tin the wires. Tinning the wires, for those who don't know, basically means covering the end of the wires in some solder. This makes life a lot easier later on, believe me, so uh, make sure you tin those wires. Both ends. Now for me, the easiest thing to do was attach the wires to the uh, RGB mod board first. It's very easy, you can't mess them up. The pads are labelled RGB, so all you got to remember is which is RGB. This is where those pre-tinned wires come in handy, because now you don't have to bother holding solder and wires at the same time and the soldering iron. Just melt that pre-tinned solder onto the pads, very simple. The next thing you got to do is measure up how long you need your wires. Now the wires will connect to some resistors. I'll put the resistors names at the bottom of the board here. And basically all you do is um, attach end of wire to each resistor. It's very simple. As you can see, I'm doing it here. Make sure you get the RGB in order. Please ignore the botched wire at the end, which is half white, half blue. I kind of messed that one up and uh, cut the wire too short. So I had to extend the cable. Um, don't worry. That cable was uh, insulated once I put the machine back together. So anyway, attach your wires to the resistors, just like I'm doing here. Don't forget, pre-tin those wires before you attempt this. Once that's done, you want to solder each individual pad to the little uh, outputs on the video out. Very, very simple. Basically, just drop some melted solder into each gap. Very easy to do. And as you can see, here we are with the finished product. Yep, it's not the cleanest of jobs and that botch wire doesn't uh, look very good, but it does work. So let's connect it up to a TV to show that. Now I'm only connecting to uh, the TV here with composite video out, just to make sure I haven't killed it. And uh, let's switch it on and as you can see, Donkey Kong boots up and we get a full, a vibrant, coloured, composite, composite, composite video out. It seems to be working just fine, no problems whatsoever. So what we need to do now is take it upstairs, connect it to the PC and do a comparison between RGB and composite video out. And just to make sure that you do believe me that this is the uh, modded Nintendo 64, there's the RGB kit at the bottom. So yeah, this is not a different machine, I didn't break it. Which just goes to show, anybody with the minimalist of skill can do this mod. So here we are with a direct composite video capture. And as you can see, we got dot crawl on the patterns on the uh, football there and also around some of the text. So um, yeah, it's a little bit messy, but you know, colors are nice. And this is actually running through an RGB, uh, no, sorry, um, 
a virtual tink 5 pro x so it's looking better there than what it would on a normal machine now here we go with a side by side comparison we got rgb on the right and composite on the left and as you can see the composite doesn't look very nice we've got dot crawl all over the text there it's shimmering and uh, it looks kind of nasty whereas the rgb looks nice and solid and clean even on white text you get like a rainbow effect around the white text not very nice so taking a look at a game running you can see here not too much difference maybe a slight difference in contrast but here on the hybrid heaven logo you can see the rgb side on the right looks much sharper than the composite side on the left Again, on the white text at the bottom of the screen, it looks uh, very sharp on the RGB side, whereas on the composite side, on the left, you get that rainbow effect across the white text. In-game, mind you, maybe the RGB looks a little bit worse, and I say this because you can see all the, um, how can we say, the mesh over the graphics, especially here where the shading is. On the composite side, the mesh is basically blenders and you can't notice it but on the RGB side because it's a lot sharper you do see the mesh. So I guess this is down to personal preference. One thing that's also weird is that the image seems to move up and down a little bit on the composite side depending on the resolution that the uh, game is outputting. So I had to compensate for that when editing this video together. The RGB side was always rock solid in the exact same position, no matter what the resolution was of the uh, output image. So here in this shower scene, you can see on the RGB side, yeah, you do see that mesh more noticeable than you do on the composite side. And here we are in game. So what do you think? Do you think doing an RGB mod on a Nintendo 64 is worth it? Well, I do since I was always brought up with RGB and I do like the sharpness of the text and I really don't like the rainbow and dock crawl effects uh, associated with composite video out. But you know, it's down to personal preference. So if you're interested in doing an RGB mod, why not try it out? As I said, it is very easy to do, not complicated at all. Someone like me with very minimal soldering skills could do it, so so can you.